Howdy all, it's Miss Kosh, and here we go. We are talking about series. Um, so we typically talk about sequences and series together because the series is the sum of the terms of a sequence. So if I have a sequence that's uh, even just one, two, three, four, um, if that's the sequence, then the series would just become one plus two plus three plus four. Okay, um, a finite sequence, meaning it, um, it has a limited number of terms, okay, so a finite sequence with n terms can be written in sigma, or sometimes we call it summation notation, or expanded, um, I think I meant, and expanded as below. I don't know what I meant there. It sum will always be a finite real number. Okay, so here's what's happening. This is what this, this sigma notation right here, that's the Greek letter sigma, this, as how I typically will write it. Um, that Greek letter tells us that we're taking the sum of a sub i as i goes from 1 to n. So what this means is that we take out the i right here and we plug in, we start with this integer and then we plug in every integer until we get here and then we plug that one in and then we stop. Okay, so um, so what we have in this case is we would say, okay, well, that's a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus, and then we would keep going until we get to a sub, well, the term that came right before the nth term is the n minus 1th term, and then we would plug in the nth term, and then there we go, we're done. Okay? Um, an infinite series, an infinite series means that it has, it goes on forever. It goes on to infinity. It has an infinite number of terms. Um, and it says, uh, it can be, Notation, I think I meant to say an infinite series can be written in sigma notation. Or, oh, okay, okay, it can be written in sigma notation, or you can expand it like that. So this expansion right here is equivalent to this sigma notation. Um, that's what I meant, sorry. Um, okay, so this, if it's an infinite series, then what we would say is we'd say, well, this is a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4, and we can't obviously write this to infinity, so we would just do plus dot dot dot. Okay, so consider the sequence 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Hopefully, you recognize that those are, pause and figure out what's happening here. Okay, you're back. Those are perfect squares. So when they want us to write down an expression for s sub n, um, so what we're looking at here, this, this, se this sequence can be written as um, n squared. Okay, so that's the first term. Um, well, so we could say a sub n is equal to n squared. Um, so they want us to write down an expression for the sum of these terms. So the sum of n, we could say this is the sum of n, this tells us how many little terms we have, that s sub n, um, is equal to, the, well, it's the sum as n goes from 1 to, eventually they're going to want us, um, well, 1 to n. Oh, notice what we have here. I used I a second ago, um, and I tried to use N twice. This is bad. This is wrong. I cannot do this. So what I need to do is I need to use a different variable so that I can plug in. I need to start um, going from 1 to get up to N. And this is then I squared. Okay, so then what they want us to do is they want us to say, well, S sub 1 is going to be the sum of just the first one term. Well, the first term is 1, so s sub 1 is equal to 1. s sub 2 is equal to the, um, the first term plus the second term, which is equal to 5. s sub 3 is going to be the first term plus the second term plus the third term, and now we're at 14. Um, keep going, s sub 4 is equal to, well, it's 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16, what do I see? That's um, 30. And s sub 5 is equal to 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25, that's the previous bit, plus 25 more is 55. Okay. The next example, they say expand and simplify. So they're wanting us to plug in, and notice on this one, I intentionally typed in these different um, letters to get you used to using different letters in our sigma notation. Um, what I, these are typically ones that you see. For whatever you, reason they use I, they use N, they use K, they might use J. Um, we don't, well, your calculator uses X, 
We could use X. I, we don't see that as often. Okay, um, so that being said, this is saying, okay, plug in one, I get one cubed. Plug in two, I get two cubed. Plug in three, I get three cubed. And so this is equal to one plus eight plus 27, which is, what's that, nine plus 27 is 36. And there we go. The next one they want us to plug in, um, they need us to plug in 1 through 5 on this expression. So this is, I don't know if I can fit it that small. This is going to be 4 times 1 plus 3 is the first term. Plus 4 times 2 ten plus 3 is the second term. Here comes the third term. Uh, I didn't save enough space. You know what? I can solve my problem. Okay, um, and then I have 4... Oh, times 4 plus 3, and then I have 4 times 5 plus 3. Okay, so that is 4 plus 3 is 7, 8 plus 3 is, a, um, is 11, and this is 12 plus 3 is 15, 16 plus 3 is 19, 20 plus 3 is 23. One other thing that I could have recognized is that this um, is my common difference. Notice I went from 7 and I added 4, and then 11 and I added 4, and I added 4. Okay. Um, and so this becomes, what do I see here? I know that 7, well, hang on. I'm too lazy to go find a calculator. That adds up to 30. That adds up to 30. And that's 15. So 60 plus 15 is 75. And there we go. All right. The next one is the first four terms. I have 1 over 2 to the 1 plus 1 over 2 to the 2nd plus 1 over 2 to the 3rd plus 1 over 2 to the 4th, which is equal to 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth. Oh, lovely. Okay, so this is, I can have a common denominator of 16. And this is 15, that equals 15 over 16. Okay, we will have formulas for to help us do some of this so that we don't have to do it by hand, but that's coming um, as we keep going. Um, you'll notice in the notes here, I have in part one, it's just general series. What does a series mean no matter what kind of, of sequence it had been? And then we move into arithmetic series. And we move into geometric series. And in particular, today we're going to look at finite geometric series. So I'll probably make, let me finish this example three, and then you'll, you'll have to come back for another video for the next part just to, to make this a little more concise. Okay, so the number, th example three says, describe the series below, then evaluate it. Well, if I plug in one, I just get one, plug in two, plug in three, plug in, well, this is all of the, um, the integers, these are positive integers from 1 to 100. So I have the last few right here. Now, there's a story I always like to tell. I think, I forget who it was, but apparently there was some, some famous dead guy who he was really annoying as a young child, and his teacher wanted him to just, he was driving his teacher crazy. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know if this is true, but I like the story, so we're going to go with it. And so the teacher's like, go add up all the numbers from all the integers from 1 to 100, and thinking that that would keep that little darling busy for a long time. And um, it did not, because what that brilliant math mind and rather precocious child did was said, okay, look, I see 1 plus 100 is 101. I see 2 plus 99 is 101. I see 3 plus 98 is 101. And so I'm getting all of these different pairs of 101. So I have 101 that adds up. Well, I end up getting 50 pairs of that. If I have 100 terms and I each one gets paired up with somebody, um, I like to, in the classroom, I'd stand out with, with my arms and say, okay, we started up with one fingertip at, at one and the other fingertip is 100 and my arms are out wide. And then I pull my arms together and they all match up. So you can kind of see how um, how the different values add up. So, But anyway, there's 50 pairs. And so this is equal to 5050. Zero, five, zero. And this leads us beautifully into the next part. But I'm going to make that another video. So go find that other video and we will keep going.